exclusive tonight at 10 first responders. They're supposed to be the people we trust. Will you give these people their money back, Josh? Well, that trust was broken after an off the clock experience with two now former firefighters. Now the 41 Action News investigators are on the case. Cat Reed digs into the deception that left the family out of options. We were planning on going all electric with our furnace, our stove, our dryer. This is a home no built with system. sweat equity. Thousands and thousands of hours. Inspired by Chip and Joanna Gaines and their home improvement show Fixer Upper. This is actually the old uh, floor joist. David Hendel and his family bought the worst house in the best neighborhood for $20,000. Everything that could be made by hand was was made by hand. It came together piece by piece. Yeah, all the shutters are the floorboards. Over three painstaking years. I helped hang mud, sand, and paint 136 sheets of drywall. For a family desperate to live debt free in a good school district, this became more than just a house. <laughs> by early 2019, it was time to turn to the professionals for electrical and plumbing work. We wanted to get it done right. We weren't looking to, you know, to cut any corners. They posted on Facebook Marketplace and soon got a response from a man named Josh Faller. He told them he and a fellow firefighter owned a remodeling company called House Medic. They said they were insured and licensed. Faller, a Liberty firefighter, went on to say his partner was the plumber and he was the electrician. Who do you not trust more than firefighters? A couple days later, Faller and his partner Bobby Schieber were on the job. David Hendel says he paid them $2,500. 1500 of that was labor, $50 an hour and um, a thousand, just under a thousand was for materials. After looking at the work, Hindle wasn't sure where his money had gone. There wasn't one thing that they did that, that was right. I mean, it was all, it's horrible, it's horrible. <sighs> I honestly don't know if I've ever yelled at somebody with such, um, just honest emotion that, because uh, I realized how screwed we were. The men promised to fix the work, but Hendel says Faller changed his tune and stopped responding to phone calls and text messages. We've gotten threats. House Medic sent Hendel a cease and desist letter threatening a harassment lawsuit if Hendel didn't stop reaching out. Bold words from a company we uncovered didn't even have a business license with the City of Liberty, a requirement for performing work. There were also no records of plumbing or electrical training. We found just one license in the City of Richmond for general contracting. In fact, House Medic's record with the Secretary of State's office says it was created to perform window and door installations. The 41 Action News investigators brought brought in a licensed electrician to take a look at the work. Oh, the range plug back here is not mounted. They didn't use a connector to protect the wire. Lazy and sloppy were two words he used to describe the job. It's just ridiculous that somebody would actually think that's okay. We caught up with the men behind House Medic. Over the phone, Bobby Schieber claimed they didn't do any work at the house. We got the same story from his partner, Josh Faller. The work that was performed in those pictures was not performed by House Medic. We tracked it down was. Faller outside the Jackson County Courthouse. Related to the homeowner's claims, you prosecutors had charged Faller did. with domestic assault and unlawful use of a weapon. He was released from jail and resigned from the fire department. Why are you guys performing work you're not qualified to do? We're no longer in business, thank you. Okay, but you were doing work you weren't licensed to do. Why? We never performed any unlicensed work. Why did you say you're an electrician in messages to families when you're not? I'm a licensed electrician. Check no, That's something not. Faller could never it. prove. Despite our request that he send over a copy of his license, his partner, decided to sit down with us and tell his side of the story. You made it seem like this family was lying about everything. Right. No, I do feel bad for that, but, I, you know, Josh was a friend and I was trying to protect him, and after I sat and thought about it, you know, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Schieber claims he focused on the work and let Fowler do the talking. The two met more than 10 years ago while working at a fire department in a different city. Schieber is an EMT now, but clarified he hasn't been a firefighter since 2017. Do you feel comfortable with the fact that you were being described as a plumber and he was calling himself an electrician? No, I don't. He says he offered to go back and work on the house and debated giving the family some of their money back. I have nothing against the guy. If I had a million dollars, I would make everything right as best, best as I could, but 
I can barely support myself and my family, so I understand where the guy's at, and I, could, I would do anything and everything to make it right with him. Meanwhile, out of money, Hendel oh, and his family um, have been forced to deal with the consequences. This is the, the gas stove that we converted to propane um, just to get us by for a while until we figure out um, the electrical situation. A situation they got into by giving their money to two men they thought they could trust. They could have done us right. They could have, or they could have turned the job down. Cat. You found other customers, didn't you? I did, you guys. I'm actually holding a petition filed by some other customers. A couple in Bates City actually took them to small claims court. It's a pretty similar story. They hired the men for a carpentry job that they were not happy with, and a judge actually ordered House Medic to pay that couple $2,500. And they're not alone either. I found another customer who is a little bit more recent, but she was too afraid to follow her after those charges to speak with us on camera, you guys. The <sighs> hard-earned cash put into this. Absolutely, wow. yeah. All right. Cat Reed. Mm. All right, if you're hiring a contractor for your next project, remember these tips from other homeowners. Get everything in writing, especially the details of the project. Double check your contractor's measurements for supplies with your own. You can even buy supplies yourself beforehand. And then only pay for work after it's done. So if the job isn't finished, don't send your final payment. 41 Action News investigator Kat Reed has some more important tips for working with contractors. She's not done yet. She'll share those tips with you tomorrow morning on 41 Action News Today.